Hey, welcome to the ninth lesson of our tutorial series on how to create 2048 in Unity. For this lesson, we're going to be fixing a logic error from our previous lessons, and then we're going to make it so that a new fill object will instantiate after we shift our 2048 grid. So let's jump right in. Now before we get started with instantiating new fill prefabs every time we shift the 2048 grid, there's a logic error that we need to fix from the previous lesson. So I'm first going to demonstrate this logic error. Now the error occurs when you have two fill objects right next to each other, but their values are different, and you shift the 2048 grid in the direction that the blocks won't move. So in this case, if I press down, and what's happened is that the cell for this two value has lost reference to the fill object. So if we have another fill object that's above this two, and I shift it down, rather than combining, the top two will overwrite the bottom two. Now this logic error is due to our cell 2048 script. And so let's open that up. And it's within each of our slide functions that this error is occurring. More specifically, it's this else statement here. This else statement is for when the fill of our current cell and the fill of our next cell do not have the same value. Now inside this else statement, we're changing the parent of the fill for our next cell to be its new cell, but then updating the reference for the fill object of the new cell, and we're clearing out the old reference of the old cell. Now this code works fine and dandy for when there's a gap between the current cell and the next cell, but when the current cell and the next cell are neighbors, current cell dot down, and next cell are already the same cell. And so this line of code isn't doing anything, and this line of code is deleting the reference that we need. Now this error is actually quite easy to fix. All we have to do is change this else statement to an else if statement, and the condition will be for if current cell dot down dot fill does not equal next cell dot fill. We then need to make this change in all the other slide functions. And so I'm going to copy this else if statement and paste it in. But we do also need to make sure that we're changing it from current cell dot down to current cell dot left and current cell dot up and current cell dot right. Let's then save the script and go back to Unity to see if we've fixed the problem. All right, so here I have a four and a two right next to each other. And so I'm going to shift it to the left. I'm then going to spawn in some more fill objects. Here we have another two, and I'm going to shift it to the left again. And if it's working, these two should combine instead of having this two overwrite the first two. And there we go. It looks like it's working. And so now we can get on to instantiating new fill prefabs every time we shift our 2048 grid. To do this, we're going to open up our game controller script. Now inside this script, we have our spawn fill function. And our first thought might just be to call this function within each of these if statements. But the problem with that is timing. If we were to do that, then a new fill object would be instantiated into our grid before we shift our grid. And so we essentially want to call this function after we've completed all of the shifting. Now the easiest way to do that would be to create a coroutine with a timer for calling this function. But once again, getting the timing is a little tricky. The best option would be for us to know when all of the slide actions have been completed. But the problem with that is that there's essentially 16 cells that receive the action. And the order in which they receive the action is unclear. But I believe that working with the actions is the best option. So to do this, I'm going to create a singleton of our game controller script. So this is going to be a public static game controller 2048. Call it instance. We'll then add in the on enable function and we'll say if instance equals null, then instance equals this. Now we'll be able to reference this singleton and call our spawn fill function from other scripts. The other thing that I want to create is a public static int that we'll call ticker. 
Now we'll use this variable to count how many cells have received our action, then we'll call our spawn fill function. But before we do that, we need to initialize this ticker variable, and we'll do that within each of these if statements. So when the player first inputs the key, we want to reset the ticker to zero. And we'll do that within each of these if statements. At this point, we can then save the script, and we'll go over to our cell script. Inside this script, we'll add some code to the bottom of our onslide function. This is the function that's called when the action is sent. And we want to add this code to the bottom of our onslide function because that's after we've done all of our sliding. And so I'll call gamecontroller2048.ticker plus plus. We can then create an if statement and we're going to check to see if our ticker variable is equal to four. And that's because if you remember, for each of our slide functions we're returning if the cell is not along the edge. And there's only four cells along each edge. So I'll type gamecontroller2048.ticker equals four. Inside this if statement, we can then call our spawn fill function. And so gamecontroller2048.instance.spawnfill. We can then save the script and we'll go back to the game controller script. Now there's one last thing that we want to do inside this lesson before we test our project, and that is we want to create our starting fill objects. To do this, we're going to use a modified spawn fill function. So I'm going to copy our spawn fill function and we'll paste it in below. We can then rename this function to start spawn fill. And then we can delete most of the code inside this function, except for the first line of code, the first if statement, and the code within the else if statement here. This will make it so that there's no longer a chance of spawning a fill object, and it'll only spawn ones with the value of two. We then need to call this function within our start function, and I'm going to call it twice. Now we can save this script and we'll go back to Unity. Alright, so here you can see our two starting fill objects, and if I press a direction, we'll say left, you can see that they're combined, and there's automatically a chance of instantiating a new fill object, rather than me having to press the spacebar. Hey, thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and tell us about any of the other games that you'd like us to create a tutorial series on down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.